The Siegfried is a tier 9 premium, and perhaps one of the best example of German over-engineering at its peak performance, particularly their concept of quality over quantity. This is probably the ship Germany would make if the Zeneiser now gets its 380mm guns and proven to be a successful commerce raider. Well, assuming Germany gives a damn about the Kriegsmarine as well. This peculiar wonder waffle is made possible by tweaking one value of the ship to such a degree. It not only jumped tiers, but also class, and most importantly how much you could charge people to get it. And that value is gun accuracy. It has the same dispersion and sigma as normal cruiser, despite having the guns taken straight out of Bismarck, which are calibrated to only hit British ships. In the Siegfried, you don't have to worry about that. For comparison, no other cruisers with guns between 254 and 380 mm have this accuracy, except one, but we will get to that. Calling these guns accurate is like shutting down arguments about game balance by showing people classified military documents. Imagine 30% of your shells finding their marks to enemy ship at range, then 60% at medium range, and then 90% at trash talking distance. There is no randomness in these guns, when it has a dispersion ellipse roughly the same size as the battleship island. So it is very good at hitting battleships, and actually hit like one. The only issue it has is the low broadside weight, which means you need multiple reloads to kill even the most level minded player in this game, only to land short of a kill, and get said kill taken by none other than the French. I have many instances of shots that are too good to be true considering the caliber and the number of guns, but this is a German ship we are talking about. They have this habit of confusing practicality with over specialization. Sure it gets battleship guns, specifically, the smallest acceptable caliber for a battleship before people start asking questions, because of this thing called overmatch, at 380mm, it only overmatches 25mm of plating, not enough to deal with the platings on so called spoiled cruisers including its kind, this is what you get when you have the accuracy to either miss everything, figuratively speaking, or completely face planting an angled ship, and it all depends on your aiming skills, something that aren't truly necessary. If you're playing German battleships, dispersion exists for a reason. Blessed with this knowledge, and perhaps a touch of self-confidence, you'll figure that anything broadside, or covered with 25mm of plating, is your priority target, such as French cruisers that were also suffering from identity crisis. More likely than not, they will try to angle thinking they are safe, not knowing that you are a ship equivalent of the average station wagon in the autobahn. And only after they are dead, they realize the true power of this German what the actual fuck. This is unacceptable. Such depreciating gesture. When I'm right there in front of him swinging my right arm at a 45 degree a So what about the armor? It has some. A lot of it. Perhaps too much. As per German tradition, this is just bragging rights that capitalizes on German superiority fad, with no practical use and exist only to overcomplicate things. 90mm of side armor is over 2 times the amount needed to auto bounce the biggest shell in the game, yet not enough to shatter past the shells, and simply makes the ship more likely to be penetrated. However, this armor quirk can be mitigated by proper play, 
The same cannot be said to its 27mm extremities and 30mm deck. While pretty much on par with most other cruisers, the ship really do be stretching the definition of one. Here is the Bismarck, and this is the Siegfried. How is this even an upgrade? Look at how big they are. And what the hell is inside those wasted space? It attracts ordinances like the whole of Germany after America joined the war. Most of your receipt damage will come from these places. No matter how good you are at dodging, it will add up and bite you when you least expect it. By the way this is also where you receive citadels. If the enemy can't get through your turtle bag, that actually works as intended. It takes citadel from range and gets away with it at close range. But given the nature of this game, the outcome is never truly black and white, a complete opposite to how the Siegfried was designed. But hey, as long as you win, and perhaps having less RNG, is one of the way, to understand this game better. German engineering in the house, yeah. This is a ship of focus, precision, and actual planning. The main goal is to become a BB, a broadside buster, but instead of punishing bad plays and relying on paid actors, you actively do whatever needed to find those broadsides. So, you put yourself in the middle of the map, to create crossfire, and have more broadsides to shoot at. This is nothing new, but this time, you have the power of German precision. You pre-aim a flank, and wait until your teammate spots a broadsiding ship, then you shoot, when you are also spotted, to maximize the element of surprise, you have a good enough concealment to rush middle and be in position, before anyone notices, and get their chance to dodge your super accurate shells. This is mostly possible because people tend to go to either flank and clump up, which seems to be common occurrence lately, but this is your game. If the map have some big cover like this one, you can just walk to the middle, and catch destroyer who were trying to be useful for his team, with your superior German hydro. Then you brute force some big 380mm shells, or you can let the secondaries do the job, which by the way, incredibly bad but becomes useful when the guns can't quite kill the destroyer. Note that this would only work in close range. With some faith, they can prevent destroyer to pull a glow worm. But what if you spawn on the flanks, which are 66% more likely to happen. And with this game now pushing the spawn further out, this is fine as well but under the condition that you are not pushing said flank until you have the ship advantage. If you're the only cruiser in the flank, support your destroyer by smashing enemy cruiser with your battleship guns while maintaining mobility to put pressure and open more broadsides. This is obviously map dependent. Bigger ones allows you to go further and catch cruisers off guard before they get their chance to angle their ship. I think you now get the gist of general positioning. So it is time to play the rest of the game. Perhaps one of the biggest weakness of this ship is both dealing and fighting against sustained damage. You can surprise people with your initial shot, but afterwards they can just angle. And please do not use HE to mitigate that, as the DPM is so bad it makes the graphs P look like the deal of the century. This is where teammates come into play once more, as mentioned before. They tend to just maintain their position not knowing if they should push or retreat. So, you leave them behind. But instead of retreating from the flank, you retreat to the middle, creating another crossfire. Whether or not your teammate survives is no longer your problem, as the moment you do this, you will automatically be the priority. But this means you have successfully split the enemy focus, and eventually win. It's a team game after all. What a surprise, although most good games can be achieved through coordinated bullet spam instead of competitive jump scares, the Siegfried leans to the latter half, but because it is so consistent, you can put more time to plan what to do, instead of shooting on every reload trying to maximize the garbage DPM. Practice reading enemy movements. People naturally wants to take the shortest path to get where they want. Use the concealment to stay dark. Get on their flanks and smash through the citadel like it's 1939. So what to look out for? HE spammers and basically all of destroyers. The same classes of ships that battleships don't want to deal with coincidence. Yes, it is necessary not to waste too much time fighting them. This is a battleship taking up cruiser slot after all. 
if you have to deal with those classes. Make sure to make it quick. Either by exposing flanks as shown earlier, or by staying concealed, and be vigilant to possible encounters, readying your shot, and use the power of jump scare to punish their mistake. If there is one class it couldn't truly punish, it's the submarines, due to the pathetically low depth charge damage, which is an oddity, given big cruisers from other nations enjoy almost triple the damage. Funnily enough, this is not even nation specific, because German supercruiser gets the better aerial depth charge, gimmicks don't come cheap. After all, it got the tools for that tactical advantage, including the torpedoes to counter rushing ships, so you can see how good they are at torpedo beating, which is something you must master, if you don't want to end up in my videos. <laughs> this is how you build the E-50, you take grease the gears, eye in the sky, superintendent, and outnumbered, then take concealment expert, top grade gunner, and your choice between one of these three skills. For the upgrades take main armament mod 1, damage control mod 1, aiming system, propulsion, concealment, and main battery mod 3. This is a sniper, with the flexibility and utility, to do things a sniper wouldn't dare or even thought of doing, it is up to you to exploit them, or risk doing nothing for the rest of the game, mind you. Not everyone had constant supply of paid actors. By being a cruiser, it gets many active skills that rewards precision through positioning. Instead of being a crutch that promotes early death, just remember to stay away from everyone else. And always look for opportunities, because the smallest most inconsequential things in game could be the difference between going back to port or coming up on top. You'll be better at noticing these things if you play ships with relatively low RNG. But obviously, this is not the only ship of its kind. The game have a version that is a destroyer, another cruiser, and even a battleship, all have 6 guns with more accuracy than whatever being put in the game right now. Such as this new battleship that is a complete opposite to the Siegfried, which is actually the first ship of its kind in the game. And then there is this Russian cruiser that had the exact same gun and accuracy, because in typical Russian fashion, they don't want to miss out at anything good. However it's so horribly out of touch with its gimmick, and being a tier 10, it doesn't make as much money, so it's not worth the trouble. As of right now, the Siegfried is one of the better choice, if you like exploiting people in game, clapping broadsides, and making loads of money doing it. I personally think this is a well balanced ship that people won't mind if the game had more of it, but unfortunately it's still nothing, compared to the dominance of HE span and overmatch power creep. Good thing it's German. So it tends to be underestimated, a nice thing to have when your teammates prefer helping the enemy instead of their own. Now go out there, and throw super accurate shells on unsuspecting ships. If that doesn't work, best hope your teammates have a better ship, and played by the legend himself. <laughs> 